my life was praying and just trying to become one with God for years. We would have to wake up at 3 a.m. to pray, like they wouldn't let us sleep. Looking back to it, I was just a very naive 18 year old, very easy to be manipulated. So that was just basic sales, what he did to me. For the first time I understood that you need so little to be happy. I was just alone in a forest. I was eating very simple food. I've been the happiest when I had the, the least amount of things. When you I genuinely was the poorest, feel that way. Honestly, it's very culty, but I didn't know what was a cult at the time. But now when you look at it, it's, it's exactly the pattern of a cult. Hello. I'm experimenting with a different kind of approach to my podcast conversations. In this episode, I'm focusing on my guest's four year journey of very nearly becoming a nun, which I found to be absolutely fascinating. This included her renouncing all of her possessions, living in a monastery, and everything else that life as a nun brings. And that person is Iwana Petrescu, a Romanian filmmaker with her own wonderful YouTube channel, which I will link to in the description and show notes. I find religion and the decisions that we make in our lives to be an endlessly fascinating topic. I just had so much fun with this conversation, and so I hope you enjoy. Before we dive into the conversation of this episode, I wanna thank the sponsor, which is Incogni. And Incogni is a company that focuses on protecting your data online. And with all of us spending so much time on the internet nowadays, so much more of our data is on there. And unfortunately, people buy and sell and publish that kind of thing, which exposes all of us to scams, identity theft, online harassment, stalking. I mean, it's, it's not good. To be completely honest with you, this sort of thing shouldn't happen at all, right? I don't think any of us want our data to be bought and sold, but this is the reality, especially when data is so lucrative. Fortunately, you actually have data rights, so you can ask data brokers to delete your data. The bad news is that doing this manually is quite time consuming and you'd have to do it very regularly because they keep gathering more data. And this is by design, right? There's so many other things that I'd rather be spending my time on. The way Incogni works is really simple. You create an account and once you give them the right to work with you, they contact data brokers on your behalf and request them to delete your data. If you're interested, you can use my code with the link in the description to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring this video. And now, let's dive in to the conversation. I wanted to record this conversation with you because I think you have a fascinating story that I'd love to explore. And I really don't know anyone else that has gone kind of through the experiences that you have gone through. Um, and so I'm hoping that you're willing to share. <laughs> yes. So as I understand it, you had a four year monastic journey Yes. Into the church. Into the depths of the church. And the thinking behind this was you were studying and training to become a nun? Yes. So when you initially asked me for this, you were like, you wanna, you were a nun. Yeah. Let's talk about your nun journey. Right. And on your birthday a few days ago, you asked me again and I said, Nathan, but I wasn't actually a nun. Right. And then you said, it's not on the podcast anymore. No, I didn't say that. I didn't <laughs> say that. Oh my God. So... I wasn't. Anyways, and I was talking to Damon and he said, yeah, you wanna, but to most people, what you have lived is exactly like it's deeper than what would absolutely we, what we what we think as nuns, because you went to the extreme of doing that. Like my life was praying and just trying to become one with God for years. Yeah. And so I, I want to go almost, through I, and, and I wanted to commit like I did. Right. I went through all of these phases. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would love to go through chronologically this journey. Mm -hmm. But I'm also curious about this simply because you had the very strong intention to live your entire life like yes. this. And so yes. for me, I'm, I'm even curious, like what sparked even wanting to do this in the first place? Let's see. Let's unpack this. Um, I was very young. I was 18 when everything started and I was doing something completely different. Now, I do not come from a religious background. That was going to be my first question. I wasn't, so you know, were you raised I was never at all? Forced. Like I know a lot of people that religion was imposed on them and mm. religion was you have to go to church on Sunday and you got to I wasn't I would I never felt that I was forced. I remember when I was 13, 14, I made this pact with God because I really liked this French boy and I was like please please just like i was praying to god <laughs> me praying to god um if i'm gonna stop doing this bad thing like i used to lie to my mom can you can i please marry this french boy please i was 13 13. 
So that was my relationship to God. That was like the the yeah. depth of it. Okay. And so not a not a not like deep, not I yeah. wasn't religious or anything. And, but and also, you're originally from Romania. Yes. And over the the dominant branch of Christianity orthodox is orthodox. Okay. Yes, like the Greeks have it, the Russians have it. They're okay. a little bit different, but yeah. So. 18, like five years later from 13, kind of my relationship to God is pretty similar. Like, I just don't have much of a connection, but I pray, you know, I believe in this higher force. Right. Um, and, and sorry, so you said you weren't regularly going to church? I wasn't. Ever? Or for Christmas or, you know? I, maybe, maybe. I mean, also my mom, she's a religious painter. So I okay. have kind of, you could say that I, I was in this world, but she never forced it on us. Okay. So on that point, yes. before we move on. A religious painter, as in paintings? Iconography. Okay. She's like one top 10 religious painter, like icon painters in the world. She's wow. She's really, really good. So there was a bit of a connection. Definitely. With like, the symbolism. And like whatnot. in my house, when you would walk into my birthday party, there were just icon, huge, like icons of Jesus and Mother Mary. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was it. It's like a museum still, still to this day. Was that significant or did that play a role in whatever happened when you were 18? Definitely. I mean, I grew up with nuns. My summers were spent with nuns. Right. My mom would just paint all of these churches. And I would just go stay with the nuns. My brother would wow. play football with them. So, With the nuns? Yes. And they would like lift their skirts up and just like run around. Wow. Really? Yes. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I have a video. It's called Misbehaving in a Monastery in Transylvania with the nuns that I used to grow with. Okay. Up with. Yeah. Okay. So, 18. I go. Uh, I was... I was a little bit rebellious. I have a rebellious nature, I would say. And my parents were, what are we going to do with her? What are we, what is the solution to this? So they sent me to this monastery and they were like, go to this camp. I said, okay, this sounds a bit unusual. Like going to this camp in the mountains with all of these people. I, I, I went there and there were 300 teenagers, everybody. And from the first moment I walked in, I understood that was not my usual crowd. Like I was all into fashion back then. I was like wearing super wow. high heels and all of these girls, like they, they had a little scarf and like, they were like, so which icon do you, what would like cross? Oh, with the St. Andrew, I have the same. And I was wow. like, hello everybody, it's me. And it was, it was just so different than what I was used to. Were you- um... Everybody was super religious in that camp. Right, mm -hmm. and were, did you feel upset to be there since you were like very rebellious at that time i always i've always been drawn to things that are i don't understand that are strange like i, I love okay. extremes I, i'm fascinated by that so i was like hmm, this is interesting but yes you're you're right four days in i wanted to leave i was like okay. i'm out of here like i don't get it we would have to wake up at 3 a.m to pray like they wouldn't let us wow. sleep i was like what are we doing everybody was like talking about getting orthodox married i was like guys wake wow. up wow. it was just really i would sleep in in a bed with 20 other people so as i was about to leave uh, hold on before you get in one bed with 20 other people <laughs> or mean, like dorm rooms um I mean, <laughs> it was a really big room and it was salta after it, it's like this mattress ma mattress next to the mattress yeah it was kind of like one big bed as I was leaving that place, somebody's like, yo, like the, a certain father, a certain monk wants to talk to you. Cause I forgot that I put myself on all of these lists to talk to all of these monks that live there. But this was during the camp that you were there. Yes. And how as, long did this was, camp as go I was, for? It was 10 days, but day four, I wanted to leave. Okay. As I was walking out the door with my bag, there's this the girl that comes up to me and she's like, this monk wants to talk to you. Wow. Just divine timing, I guess. I go up and I have the conversation that changed my life. Now, looking back to it, I was just a very naive 18 year old, very easy to be manipulated. So now that was just basic sales. What he did to me, it was basic. I, wow. I swear to God, if you like look at a say how a sales call works, this that's what he did to me. And he converted me at the end. And sometimes like he would refer to these people like, yeah, it, as a joke, but in the summer, in the summers after, cause I became like, I was so devoted um, in the summers after he would refer to, oh, it's the season of conversions, of converting people. Wow. Yeah. So, all right. Yes. Oh, I have so many questions. So first of all, 
what wh how did it make it a sales call what did he do exactly that was so convincing to you in hindsight was he was it manipulative was it i don't know nathan looking back i just you know when you remember something that gave you the most the, the best things in your life yeah. but also almost destroyed you kind of both so i have it, yeah. yeah it does seem he's the like the guy that did that to me <laughs> no but it really had such a profound impact in the best way and also in the worst way in a way yeah mm -hmm. were there moments during that conversation where something clicked and you immediately yes. were, were clear on what you wanted to do or he just planted a seed what did he say to you? I So my little brain back then was like, hmm, I'm going to record this. You recorded it. I have it. I have it. You have that conversation? Yes, and years later, I, I started analyzing it. So I have the whole thing. It's on my phone. Like I have it okay. in a document. But it's it was a lot of uh, understanding teenagers and my pattern. And because I wasn't very self-aware, when somebody would say something about me that was so obvious because they're just older and experienced. Right. I was like, how do you know that? So they were, he made observations about you. About, yeah, that made me feel that he can read my, my thoughts. I thought he was a saint. And a lot of people think he is a saint. Did he claim to be a saint? He, you don't have this, but it's, it's really controversial. We're really getting into controversial theory. This is not me yeah. talking bad about this guy. It's just, I've had incredible things coming from my interaction with him and then also just a lot of okay. turmoil. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've had that conversation and over the next three years, I've had a crescendo of me changing my life 180, starting to pray really hard and just wanting to become a nun. And that it all like crescendo to me giving all of my things up and just wanting to become a nun in a monastery under his under his command, under his, his wow. spiritual leadership. And that never ended up happening because my parents got opposed to it. My mom, she's uh, in the Orthodox Church. She knows a lot of people. And um, she just didn't trust this guy. And Wow, so she wasn't thrilled about no, this. No, 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 no. Even though she sent me to that camp initially. Mm -hmm. And parents, she's also an Orthodox yeah, Christian. She just, my mom does not does not vibe with this guy, let's just say. Um, and it's very, he's very, he's such a polarizing person. Like some people either think he's a saint. Some people think he's the devil. Okay. Okay. So my parents got opposed. They didn't let me go. I was like, I texted him. I was like, what am I going to do? Can you promise me that if I come there, you are at least enlightened so i can trust that i can learn from an enlightened man and then he re responded i cannot promise anything and that's when i was like you had doubts yeah let me let me think about this a little bit okay you texted him yeah like of course so you could text this man yeah like he would always change his phone number but uh, yeah so this sounds so creepy but this also sounds really culty. weird it's very culty it's very culty but i didn't know what was a cult at the time but now when you look at it, it's it's exactly the pattern of a cult. I, I just have so many questions. So how were you able to text him if you gave up all of your possessions? You still had a phone. Yeah, not all of my possessions, but most of my possessions. What did you do when you did this? Like, what, what did you do with all those possessions? Just keep them away to friends, threw them away. And what did you keep? Just a few clothes, black ones. B black clothing? All of, all of my black clothes. As because you weren't allowed to wear anything other than black, or it was something. It was like a. It's, it's all in Christ, in Orthodox Christianity. It's all about just blending and smereni, like humility. Just okay. just don't even walk with your back straight because that's too proud. So wow. I would just hunch over. I still have bad posture from those years. Everybody's like <laughs> walking like this. I know you're joking, but no, you're also true. not. It's true. No, it's true. You're joking, but you're not. I know. No, it's not like, the whole literally. like you still have bad posture comment. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that you're. I know that you're serious about what you're saying. Wait, do I have bad posture? No, I don't know. You just said it, and I believe you. I don't think you have. No, bad I don't. Posture. I don't have bad posture. That was a joke, actually. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay, so. Yes. <clears throat> so you kept some black clothing. Black clothing. You kept the phone. Yes, but that's that's a, a very long process now. In these three years of in my crescendo of becoming a nun, there are a few key points. Okay. Uh, the 
the one that is like a magical thing that almost never happened, but it did. I moved and so one year in, I moved in a forest and lived there alone for three months. You lived in the forest alone for three months? For three months in a tent. And that was just insane. So it this was, was an assignment that you had to follow? No, it was my, because in the first year, I started reading all of these books about the Bible, about saints, about how they live. And I was like, everybody was secluding themselves and just praying to God. And right. I said, if they can do it, so can I. Right. So I was like, can I please, please, I, you have to ask for permission for everything. Can I please, 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 I want to just do this. So he said, yeah, let's do it. Now, what I'd like to understand a little bit more is what was the impulse to go on this journey? Did it just feel like a divine calling? Was totally, it totally, totally, totally divine calling? Like Something. the material world, I need to move beyond this yes. and I need to get closer to God. Yes, <clears throat> yes, it was the realization that all of these things that I thought I needed, I was really fascinated by the pop culture back then. I was like, ooh, Hollywood. Right. I was 18. Had, yeah. I mean, I, I love the 18 year old version of me. It's just, I didn't understand how that's not something worth pursuing. Right. Yeah. Now, okay. And I was just directed to deeper things. What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What is a human? What is a soul? What is truth? What if we're going to die? I was, I got really connected to this. You're making a video about Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So did that three month period in living alone in the forest, mm -hmm. what were the key takeaways? Like, did it feel meaningful? Did it, did it, did it impact you? Let me show you my power, my PowerPoint presentation in day one. <laughs> No, but I can tell you, I think my routine, what was my daily routine in the forest? I would wake up at 5 a.m. when, wow. with the sunrise, I had, um, I just had a phone that I would charge. How would I charge my phone? Oh, there was a forest ranger. There was one forest ranger and his wife, that was the only human living in that forest. And then they had two cow three cows and a little baby and they cut the baby for the meat. And I would... Wake up at 5 a.m. That's a well-practiced joke right there. No, I, I just made it up. I mean, I just... <laughs> that was a good one. It's spontaneous. It's a good one. Just for you. And I would wake up 5 a.m., pray until 8, from 8 to 9. So three hours of prayer. Wait, this is not this is not it. From 8 to 9, I would do my breakfast, only fruits, mono meal. From 9, then I would do two hours of praying, two hours of reading, religious books, Bible, like... Geronosi, all of these like Maika Gavrilia, all of these like super intense people that were fighting with the devil. I still, that's still one of my biggest questions. Is the devil real? Because I've just read way too many books. Wow. I've read hundreds of books about people describing vi as vividly as we're talking about, I don't know, Elon Musk, technology, water. You were talking about their experiences with the devil and it's just. Wow. I just, it's a lot going on. What's, what's okay. happening up here? Yep. And um, two hour, <clears throat> then I would eat my lunch for one hour. Um, and then two hours of praying, two hours of reading, one hour break. That would be my one hour break for the day where I would usually just tend to my tent and just organize stuff because it was, I wouldn't have a break, you know, it was like back to back to back. And um, then one hour of praying and then sleep. And that was it. On, and then repeat. I did that for three months, and that was just absolutely insane. I didn't have a mirror. I forgot how I looked like. It was. In, I would just wake up. I would be in the forest. It'd be dark. It would be just green. It would be so fresh. It was. A, I had a lake next to it. I would just like jump from hill. I felt like a wild fox. It was so beautiful. So was this over the summer? Yeah, it was over the summer. Thank God, because otherwise. I know. I yeah. did Romanian forest. Over the summer, but it was wild. I remember. I don't know how I was doing this. Like, Where did you get the food? Um, I would have this lady, she was also under his, like, she was also, he, he was a spiritual father to her as well. He as in the monk. The guy. Yeah. Yeah. And she was kind of looking after me and she would send me uh, this uh, truck of food. I saw pictures. Oh, I have to. A truck of food? Yeah. Okay. I'll find some pictures. Actually, could you send me the photo? Could I show it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. Your truck of food. Yeah, my truck of food. Um, okay. So, all right. Now, 
what is how are you how you're praying to God I am imagining yes during this, Jesus Christ to Jesus Christ okay yes. now what does that look like because it sounds like you're doing it for something like five plus hours a day and then later in the years it go away more okay because right? I was praying so we'll get night. to that mm -hmm. okay actually why don't you continue with that because I'm curious I would love for you to also share like what does the praying look like exactly what are you how does that work? The praying is very similar to a meditation in a way where you direct all of your focus. There is no splitting your focus. You just focus on, you can do it multiple ways, but you just focus either on the words, on your breath. And with praying, you can do it. Um, you can just read prayers. You can read Psalms. You can read like just, there are all of these prayer books and Christianity mm -hmm. that you can do. I would... I would just, I remember I would sometimes in my prayer hours, oh, that was so beautiful. I would just walk through the forest and learn psalms and like memorize them. Wow. And I would like, I think I remembered the first 30, like I memorized them. Can you, can, do you remember any of them still? Sure, of course. Could you say one? One, okay. Um, fifth, psalm 50, like that's, that's mainstream, but let's do it. Okay, let me see. Oh my God, I haven't done this. So, um, Miluiește-mă Dumnezeu de după mare mila ta și după mulțimea durerilor tale, șterge fără de legea mea. Mai vă toți mă spală de fără de legea mea și de păcatul meu mă curățește, că fără de legea mea eu cunosc și păcatul meu înaintea mea este purura. Ți eu nu i-am greșit și rău înaintea ta am făcut. I feel like a subject doing that this. That is so incredible. That's crazy. Oh my God, I said this so many times. Now, you just said something so fascinating. I, I, this is so fascinating. You said it was so beautiful. It was, yeah. Why you're you're confused? Why why was it beautiful? I want you to just share more about what made it beautiful. I'm not confused about that. I'm just picking up on it. My, we're getting into a subject that is so. It's interesting that we're talking about this, and you want to go deep into this. But this is something that's so so in the past. You know, it's so. I'm. It's almost like I'm talking about somebody else. But I'm super down to to get into it. It's um. It was a lot of. For the first time, I understood that you need so little to be happy. I was just alone in a forest. I was eating very simple food. I wasn't stimulated by, I wasn't getting any type of praise or compliments. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know how I looked like. I was very, I was living the, the poor life basically. Mm -hmm. And just staying in nature, basic things like that. Staying in nature, focusing your mind on learning Psalms. And the Psalms themselves, they're, they're beautiful because they tackle topics like the stars and the and the and the creation and you just pray for the best. I mean, some of them are just completely ruthless and aggressive and just like kill oh, really? the enemy. And wow. but then they have diff <clears throat> different interpretations. But that was that was intense. And so I've I've had my forest experience. It got really wild because there was a lot of humidity and sometimes it would rain like crazy. When I left to the forest, I lied to my parents and I told them that I'm going to a summer camp. I don't know. Oh, that's how you made it to, you managed to <laughs> yes. go for three months to the forest? Yes, yes, because otherwise they wouldn't have. Okay. Right, of course. And I'm eventually, surprised I didn't ask you this yes. question already. <laughs> yeah, like, how did you go to the forest? Eventually they, they uh, found out and they visited me and everything was nice. But... And they were okay with you living in the forest? Um, I mean, I've always been a wildflower, so... I don't know they were they were used to me just going after things okay. that were interesting. Um, so this was a high, this was an important key point of your journey. Yes. But it sounds like it only intensified. Yes, it only it only made me want to do it more. I was dreading going back to the city. I was like, how am I gonna go back after the, everything I've lived here? I just I just want this to be the rest of my life. And I um, wait. It was raining a lot of my tent. I need to mention this because that was that was also intense. It was raining a lot of my tent. Okay. My t tent wasn't uh, waterproof. So sometimes I would wake up with this amount of water in my tent. It was so bad. Like swimming. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So I would take, I would have to take all of the water out. Also pray at the same time. Like At the same time. <laughs> Productivity, baby. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, um, oh my gosh. And then... Uh, I moved into the forest ranger had a little um, garage for the cows, like little house for the cows, but it was just for the cows. So I moved on uh, like in the um, 
pod of that. I'm just this is Romanian, but on the like above the cows, like the attic, the attic of the cows, and I just set my tent there. The I pod. felt, I felt, yeah, I felt so good. Those clothes still smell like cow poo to this day. And one of the cows was pregnant, and she would like mm, mm, the whole night. Oh my goodness! But I remember that with a lot of joy. Wow! 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 Okay. So that, the, the, those were the details, and um, and that just made me want it even more. I started praying harder, and a few years later, my schedule looked like I would I would do a lot of night prayers. I would just wake up in the middle of the night at 12, pray until five in the morning, go to bed until 10. From 10, I would like two hours of reading, two hours of praying, lunch, and then just pray, praying and lunch and then sleep. Wow, okay. What followed this three month period in the forest? Going back to the city and I was doing my graphic design diploma. So you, So is this a typical journey into what, how do you refer to this? The sisterhood? The sisterhood. Right? Yeah. So is it normal for someone to be doing their studies at the same time? Or you were just trying to get more bit by bit integrated into this world? Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just drawn to this thing. But it was also a lot. It was fear based. When somebody really connects to your fears and pl plays with them in a way where plays with love and fear this is a really powerful combination makes you feel like you you get the most love but also you you fear that this cults do this this yeah death is just around the corner if you don't repent now if you don't listen to what he says so that was the messaging you were receiving from the monk yes. and from the monastery it's beautiful there are beautiful parts but it's also fucked up um, okay mm -hmm. now you got to the point where three years in is it like stints that you were spending in the monastery i was doing or... i was doing my normal life so you were living in the you were living I, in the city but I you were just praying many hours I a was, day yeah i i became unbearable i think because i was just 18 and I'm, i was like you guys don't understand you have to pray you have to repent because to the apocalypse parents. yeah like i was just i think uh, okay i would i would know the the truth of all existence and i would like just tell everyone that, oh my God, you have to believe in the Christ and right. the Jesus. And every time I meet someone that's religious, I, I can relate to them in so well, I think. Wow. Um, not in a negative way. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't mean it in a negative way. I meant it in, I can relate to how much joy that can bring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I am trying to get to yes. the bottom of here is I find this entire journey fascinating and you just keep saying extremely interesting things like it's a powerful combination the the love and the fear that they were using or or directing towards you or for example the fact that this feels like it was a different person right when you look back on it it's just such a fascinating journey you went on that i don't know anybody else who's been on a journey like that and i'm just curious like to learn more about that journey that you went on, but also it seems as though, I don't know how close you got into it. Is there like an induction process where you are officially made a nun? Yes, it's like a marriage. It's you, like a marriage. It's exactly, you go to the church, you make a vow, they cut a piece of your hair, and then your hair is never gonna be cut again. Your, your hair is never cut again? Mm -hmm. This is how they do it. So it just this grows the until your feet. Style. Yes. I don't know. I, actually, I don't know. Now, did you do that process? Or you? No, no. How, how like, close did you get to that? Mm, pretty close. I mean, I remember in 2017, that was the year when there was this day when I made the commitment. And when you know when you make a decision inside yourself that it's so deep, you just promise something to yourself yeah. that I'm going to do this and there's no backing out? Yeah. I did that. You made that. I you was made like, that I'm, do, I'm doing this. I'm becoming a nun. I'm doing this. I, it was so serious and I felt like I died for the world. And then it was very strange not doing it. So that's why still a part of me might still, it was just too deep that promise. I don't know. Wow. Okay. So. Bye. It, I'm going to the monastery. Basically, basically it was that 
sentence that the monk eventually told you that he cannot promise that you'll find enlightenment that shook your confidence to there such an extent. Of, there were a lot of fishy things, but the the number one thing that religion or this type of religious activity did is completely demolish your critical thinking. And as an 18 year old, I had some, but the first thing they did is like, no, you cannot, don't think of yourself because that's the devil planting thoughts in your head. Wow. So don't do that. So I, I wasn't allowed to think for myself. And I was thinking, oh, dev, dev, devil. So if you felt that yeah. critical thinking was getting completely demolished, mm -hmm. what brought that back? How did you start thinking about things in a different light? It was a long process of coming to terms with I'm still I'm still going through it to be honest but it was a long process of realizing that I don't belong there and I'm not going to be a part of that religious group. How did you realize that conversations with your mother? No, no, not at all. I I said okay, I cannot be I cannot be a nun. Like I'm not I my parents don't let me. I don't have any money because you know what's a nun life you make a po poverty vow so i couldn't you make no money like but what's I made the problem with not making money if you are yeah but how do you how do i go to the monastery how do i buy a flight ticket to get to france where, where the monastery was wow so that was what was blocking you like i couldn't you know like i needed some money to at least do that and then if i would have left there how would i live you know like i was making zero money so then right after the my my, my nun phase ended I, I made a promise i was like let me make money and after i make money i can make a decision and go there again so i did that i did 2018 2019 2020 once you had the money yeah like i became a filmmaker that's how right. we met i became a filmmaker i started not only making i gained my financial freedom but i also started my film course mm -hmm. so i did all of this and then three years later i went to france and then my heart was like racing really crazy oh wow i was like i walk in i look at all of these girls that used to be my super close friends we would pray together we would live together beautiful, beautiful they are all beautiful. nuns now most of them yes wow i knew those girls they're all nuns now they have different names right you need a new name yeah it was this big cathedral middle of the night because that's when the praying is being done because Anyways, like they think that the Satanists pray there, so they gotta like fight the forces of evil. Wow. Like, anyways, so I get in there, I I sit in silence. Everybody walks in. I was super nervous, and through throughout that night, I slowly realized, oh, I don't belong here. I felt I felt so I felt it so. It's, it was my intuition that I started to believe in in these three years. Yeah, I, I just don't belong here, so. That was it. And then you stepped and away. And that gave me a lot of closure. And I said, no, actually, I have to do something else. And then I figured it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the role, it's from what you're describing, because I'm not particularly familiar. I'm finding this quite enlightening. Is a large part of the role of a nun to be essentially battling the devil through prayer? Is that kind of what's going on? No, it's becoming one with God. One with God, but it, 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 you keep mentioning say, pres the presence of that's Satan why, and the that's, devil. That's why I think that's my problem with religion, with with this with Orthodox Christianity, is this focus on the fear of the devil, fear and also fear of God. A lot of fear. There was a lot of fear, and there was so much fear planted in my head around the devil like oh the devil the devil like let's not focus on the devil let's focus on the goodness of, and on on the goodness of the world yeah. and so you're not supposed to fight the devil but there are so many people like i in the beginning i used to fight the devil all the time i don't know how i was fighting the devil but yeah, you you can also do the jesus prayer that's one of that's one of the prayers okay you just say the same prayer, kind of like a mantra, like again and again and again. Right. And you synchronize it with your breathing and you just breathe and breathe and breathe in. And you and there is this book, it's called Pelerinul Rus. It's like the Russian pel pilgrim, I think. And he talks about, it's literally a book about how he learns this prayer. And then the prayer stops, like his heart starts generating the prayer. So he's always praying. 
this is what they say. I never lived it, but then I know someone, this guy, who said he lived it when he went to Mount Athos. So like, there are so many things. There just is just a really vast subject. I think this if is you a want, very vast subject. I think I feel like you want something juicy. Like, no, I'm not. I'm literally none juiciness. I think this is all incredibly interesting to me. I think, and I guess I'm curious when you look back on this period of your life. Does it f feel? like a waste does it feel no, no i think it's absolutely fundamental for who i am today i think the reason why i do vma and i do i do filmmaking and i and i also teach the the, the teaching journey it's a lot of my non desire to want to do good and to add add to this world yeah. you know contribute somehow but i would have done it as a nun praying for other people because that's what you do as a nun you just pray for other people and to yourself and you just make the world a better place through thought and through energy i just i just do that through teaching do you feel the, the re-entering the world sort of with different intentions now instead of renouncing your you know the like you said you said a vow of poverty right not having very many possessions reversing that was that jarring for you actually it was jarring in the beginning but then I, I thought, what a beautiful thing to be able to experience both extremes and then to integrate them. So I can bring them. I can, I have them both in my sleeves and I can do poverty well. And I can also do the opposite of that well, I think. And I think it's, uh, that works for anything. I think being able to take, take court and speak and just talk share your ideas is important but it's also important to do the opposite of that which is to be quiet and listen so i think just integrate and polar opposites i think it's mm -hmm. it's a beautiful important thing are there moments where you wonder about the life that you could have led as a nun right now or could be leading definitely definitely if i would yeah because it wasn't that's the thing it wasn't my it was it was my decision but there's a part in my mind that says i couldn't do it because of my mom because if my parents wouldn't have wouldn't have stepped in, I would have done it. You think so? Yeah. I thought you said your intuition was. Speaking yeah, through. but it, it, was, it was just so. It was like hell in my house. Like yeah. Wow. Oh wow. All hell broke loose. Now, what's interesting about that is your mother, is, uh, you said an Orthodox Christian. Yes. And therefore, you are making a big commitment to what she believes, right? That's what I said. But was it kind of down to the, the politics, the dynamic of the of the monastery and and the monk? Yeah, it's just it's just so nuanced, Nathan. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of nuance. Because even that's 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 what's crazy about religion. Even in the same religious group, you know, we're not even talking about Christianity. We're talking about Orthodox Christianity. They cannot agree with each other. They cannot, like, my mom cannot agree with this guy, and this guy cannot agree with this other guy. He's not doing it right. And then nobody's like, nobody agrees with anything. Yeah. You saw Eckhart Tolle or Toll <laughs> speak Yesterday, last night. yes. It was so cute. Could you, did you find any parallels between what he says and the teachings in Christianity? There are similarities between all religions, for sure. Yeah. Of course, of course. It's the, the, Jesus prayer that I told you about is being present. It's very, yeah. It's a lot. Like Today, that. do you consider yourself a Christian? <laughs> Some people, I know my brother is going to be like, you want to, don't say this. Not really. I mean, but probably if something would fall on my head right now, or, you know, it'd be in danger of death. I'd be like, please, really, Jesus, please. Probably. It's just so deep inside of me that I cannot even. Do you pray still? I'm finding that I'm on a journey of finding that I'm 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 right now like in Asia I was looking at all of these different it's such a wake-up call you go there and you see Buddhists and you see uh, Hindu people I went to Bali I, you see how Christianity is the strangest thing to them ever and how they right. have their own way of doing things and I also saw these two movies this year um, Baraka and Samsara I don't know if you've heard of them these two movies, I feel, really summarize religion. Religion and just our attempt to try to find divinity and truth and God. And they show how we're just 
so there there are so many of us uh trying trying to achieve the same thing through different means at the same time do i believe it's the same thing no yeah like do i believe all the religions are the same no that's what i meant okay and by that you mean the teachings are actually different the core yeah. values are not all the same mm -hmm. And I'm still figuring that out. I'm still, I don't know exactly because I just want to explore that a bit more. Yeah. I'm really curious about that. You have your curiosities and I feel like that those are mine. So I am curious to, to know a little bit more about what the biggest things you feel you learned from this journey are. What, what are the big takeaways of this very rich chapter of your life? where you were going in one direction and ultimately realized you didn't want to go in that direction? All of these things that we think we need, we don't. We don't need, we don't really need most of the things that right now we are desiring. And as Dostoevsky said, we, be, we get used, we, a human can get used to anything. It, it just becomes your new normal. I was just in Asia. I thought in the beginning, I was, oh my God, look at this nature. I will never get over this. Mm -hmm. Eight months in, it was the new normal. Right. Same with pain. It's, I'm really fascinated by the, by the communist experiments, very similar to 1984 by right. Orwell. Yeah. But it was in real life. Mm -hmm. And they, you just get used to not eating. You just eat, just eating this amount of bread per day. You get used to not being able to sleep. You get used to all of these things. They become and you just find happiness in different ways. Yeah. So right now we're just focused on do, doing more. Like we want more, more, and it never ends. It never actually ends. And so that was something. That was something that was a big lesson. Number one. Um, another lesson. And just on that point. Yes. Does it feel like it's something that you carry with you now that you can find contentedness with much less than perhaps a lot of people around you that don't have this awareness? That definitely, yeah, exactly. That definitely helps. That definitely just, just uh, feels, life feels less of a burden when, when you look at it that way, that I'm going to be okay with less actually. Yeah. What's, what's going to happen? Cause I've had, I've been the happiest when I had the, the least amount of things. You I genuinely was the poorest, feel that way? Honestly. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Also, there's a part of me that is questioning, am I just romanticizing that chapter of my life? Right. Because we tend to do that. Yeah. And forget all the bad stuff. But I'm, I'm analyzing that. Yeah. Um, okay, that's one big takeaway. That's one big takeaway. Another big takeaway. Hmm. I want to give you good takeaways. Not that I'm going to want to give you bad takeaways. It's made you question if the devil exists? Of course. Of course, I'm still questioning. There, there are people that have... People that I know that told me that he, they have seen it and they have fought it and the devil, like, tied them up. Yeah. Like, what do you say to that? If I'm like, the devil tied me up. You either think they're crazy or it's real. But if right. you have tens of exa hundreds of examples of people that say the same thing you start questioning things a little bit yeah um does that keep you up at night at all used to wow used to and bali like seeing all of these devil statues and like the devil dancing and the hindu uh, yeah religion is it was really interesting and i was talking to damon damon what's the devil but i don't know we i, totally. I haven't I, I i haven't had any experiences with that um, there are so many takeaways. I don't wait. Can I ask you about yeah. as a nun, uh, if I understand this correctly, as in many religious practices, right? You had to do a lot of renunciation. So it was a renunciation of things, but it was also a renunciation of sex. Love that. Love what you just said. Okay. That's my second big takeaway. It's one of the fundamental experiences to actually achieve happiness is learning to let all of the things you are identified with go letting all of them go that's i think that can only do you good that's and that's something that i went through and i think that if you go through that process of 
because that's also the process of becoming self-aware mm -hmm. you think oh and then you realize oh i thought i was my looks and then in those years i cut my hair off i was like super i had hair like you wow i started dressing like super boyish and just i would like leave my mustache grow and like i don't have but you know it was you know like the girls because i'm like brunette so it was like I was like you, Nathan. You like, cut your hair like me, as in taller hair, on top. Like I was, I was trying to like be desexualize my look. Right. I was a virgin, so of course, like I wasn't having any action, but it was. Uh, and I just, I just got deeper and deeper and deeper with the things that I identify myself with, and I realized how conditioned. But that's also pretty sad. How conditional all of the love we think is love is, because. If, you know, if I would, I, rem I realized if I stop dressing like this, if I stop talking like this, if I stop doing the, the things that people think are charming or cool, that's not necessarily me. That's just a, a side of myself. So if you give those things up, who are you? You know, like right. without the validation, without the validation and yeah. without it, it really gets into a scary place where you realize you're nothing and you're everything at the same right. time. But that's very applicable. That's some very meta type of activity that I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that at 19 I was doing this and because that just inspired so much of what I'm doing right now. Totally. And not a lot of people know about this. I got to say, I mean, I didn't go on a journey like you at all, religiously speaking. However, I was also pretty sworn off any, I don't know if you saw my most recent video, but uh, any Dama dating. Told me, Dama told me about that. Yeah, I was celibate for a long period of time. Um, longer even than your entire monastic journey, it sounds like. And I'm so grateful. I am so glad that happened. I, I didn't tell this story. If I may just share a quick anecdote. I didn't tell this story in the video. But one day, I'm like 19, I think, or 20. I'm at a house party in the United States. And Americans don't are not great at drinking alcohol. Like, especially at that age, they just go nuts. So people are getting drunk like kind of like a crazy drunk, right? When you drink alcohol very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I've had, I'm not drunk. Like I've had a little bit, but I'm not drunk. And a friend of mine and a girl she knows arrive at the party and this, this girl that she knows, uh, like I end up with her or something like that. My friend disappears we're on the dance floor and we're dancing. And she says to me, I like your beard. <laughs> But I say that because we've had a very, very limited interaction. It's like, couldn't have been more than 10, 20 words to each other. And then she starts making out with me. She's very drunk. Right. Very, there. very drunk. Mm. And I immediately was like, whoa, no, 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 no. I don't want this. This feels so weird to me. You're very drunk. You have no idea what you're doing right now. I didn't say that, but that's what I felt. I was just grossed out by the whole thing. And I... I, I, you know, I was like, I have to go, you know, and I, and I left her. Um, and I just really feel like that was one of several anecdotes that I have that make me, I look back on that. I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't engage in that sort of stuff. And instead I did like a deeper internal exploration because it's so easy to operate on autopilot or just like do whatever everyone else is doing around you, you know? And I find that that has... Also, I mean, I know you're describing the dangers of going on this journey as well, but there's dangers also in not reflecting, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Wait, and, I think there are always dangers in not reflecting. Yeah, there's always the dangers. The more reflecting, the better. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And in, in a weird way, it sounds like in some ways this journey created reflection for you, and in some ways it, it, uh, it pushed against your critical thinking, which is so interesting it's like a mixed bag right yeah but isn't that what life is life is yeah any any other big takeaways that you had from this time there are so many and i'm still processing this i'm mm -hmm. still going through the process wait let me give you this is oh because you were like more takeaways more i have so many i'm processing so much this is just just a little notebook i made and i'm just writing this is just for my monastic journey so let me let me just let me just find something Oh, all of these are all takeaways, okay? Like, to keep, to let go. Like, you know, let's see. Oh, like, the takeaways that you took from this time that yeah, you want to keep example, versus you want to let go. 
fasting, I learned this. Uh, focusing only one thing, like that's incredible. That's great. Getting closer to nature, beautiful. Um, getting this like being precocious sexually. Like wait, wait, wait. Let me. Like not being precocious sexually. No, no, no. Like that's to keep. Like because as a nun, you don't have sex, right? And it's so it's that's something that's so special and right. meaningful. Right, 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 like, right. I I do that to let go of. <laughs> Why is this list so long? I know it looks so much longer. Is this all in Romanian? Yeah, it's all in Romanian. So okay. That's why I have to translate. Oh, oh, oh! I, I'm just getting triggered treating this. Like trying to, trying to feel my um, like just my sins. Like it's oh, so yeah. like how we are sinners and like crying for my sins. There's literally a book where you you're meant, you're supposed to cry for your sins, and there are like all of these wow. prayers to cry. And I would just stay and just read this prayers and like cry for my sins yeah it was actually pretty cool like <laughs> it was cool or not no, no like it was when i look back it's it's crazy but it was i prefer that than to scrolling on tiktok you know really i mean scrolling on tiktok is meaningless at least like but is it meaningful to be obsessing over no, your sins? No, that's crazy. That's that's bad. That's bad. But but the fact of like trying to connect with something, I would just feel so connected to myself, you know. But right. it was a fearful part of myself that wasn't true. That's the problem because it's a lie. Then everything, oh, the, like this focus on the devil. I want to let go of right. the the constant fear of the um, apocalypse coming right, right around the corner. He was like the ant antichrist was born. Right. He was born. He's living right now. He's gonna come and get you. Uh, the obsession with humility and like trying to uh, get a hold of the whole sfunt, like how do you call this? Like, so humility is not a good thing. It is. No, like I want to let let go of. I want to let go of these things because they were part of my religious process. Right. And I think they're not. I don't. I don't want them. So, but the humility element, I didn't understand. Um, it's it's one of the ways to. I mean, it's the is the way through which you get close to god you have to be humble humble and you hit smerenia like you get you gotta get smerenia right. before anything else like that's the biggest virtue right. and if you don't have it and so this all of these years was like everybody's trying to like be humble and like they would be oh i'm so sorry like the all of these manures and like, oh i'm so like you would walk like this and you would just be like oh i'm so sorry okay Yertar, and like just say all of these weird things it was just it just got weird so why did you find that it was something that you really want to let go of it felt repressive i mean this is it's just not true like what i hu being humble is good but that was um a fake humility that's the problem okay that was not real human that was just trying to embody humility from an exterior point of view right yeah but you're not humble on the inside I, this is not how it works I have a lot of this. This well, is this incredible. Is, it's a lot. Like good things. Like, oh, look, good things. A lot okay. of good things. Bad things. Oh. Yeah, these are like a lot of, just like a lot of, look at that. Would you recommend this journey to someone who's curious? I recommend you, if you, if you are drawn to intense experiences, I feel like you're definitely going to grow a lot from them. Yeah. Is it possible? for a man to become a nun. No. A monk. A monk. It's yeah. the same thing just for men. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are there any differences between being a nun and being a monk? No. None. Still the same. Still the same smerenya, still the same thing. Interesting. You just do like a heavier tasks. And do do the monks and the nuns interact often or it was just no, with the lead it's, monk? No, it's uh, nuns monasteries and monks monastery. The place like the question what would you do if you were a guy? Like, I always wanted to go to Athos. Only as a guy you can go there. And there are all of these monks that are like saints and like they pray. Why can only monks go and not nuns? It's 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 sexist, sexist. Though. So there are differences. No, they just did that. They didn't let women in, so they don't get tempted. Right. Yeah. Okay, I see. Gotcha. But there's no, there's not a difference. Yeah. But I just, I just want, I just want a place for women. Like yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually don't. But, Okay. Okay. So, concluding thoughts on this. Uh, it sounds like you're still processing I'm this. I'm still processing this. I'm a hundred percent processing this. I don't have the answers yet, and I'm gonna do so many films about this. Do you feel uh, 
it sounds like it was despite everything, despite the fact that it was a bunch of stuff that th there were a lot of elements to this that you both like and strongly dislike. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it was a very meaningful period of your life, a period of your life that you don't regret. Uh, however, is there any shame or embarrassment about this? Because you say, you say, for me, when I look back on certain periods of my life and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was like a different person. Uh, I try to be compassionate with previous versions of myself, mm -hmm. but it's hard. Sometimes when I get close to it and look at my thought process, I'm like, what was I thinking? You know, do you have that? If I would have met the super religious Iwana from the beginning, when I would, I would try to convert everybody to Christianity. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be... I don't know if we would get along, to be honest. Mm. Mm. But I would give her a hug. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. Like I said, there will be links in the description and show notes, both on ways to support this podcast, as well as to check out Iwana's work, which I find to be very creative, very original, very fresh on YouTube. Having said all that, thank you so much for listening.